Hi everyone, today we are reviewing this uh, watercolor set by Lucas called Aquarelle 1862. It is their artist grade and, and they come in this nice box. Let's open it. Here it uh, says the tells the story of the Lucas company. It's a German company and it was founded in 1862 by Dr. Frank Schoenfeld. And uh, he invented or copied the advantages of watercolors in tubes. Let's open it. It comes uh, with the, the paint the 48 half pans and and this uh, quite sturdy tin box it's a standard tin box where you can put your half pans but uh, I will start unwrapping them All pens have uh, the information on the label. They have a code number, stars for light fastness. This white, for instance, is three stars, light fast. And they have the pigment code. For instance, this is PW5, PW6 on the back. So let's unwrap them. Uh, 48 pans are in their place, they're not very snuggle, there is room for more pans. I can take these out and uh, I can use more mixing space. These pans are made in the UK for Lucas, so they're not made in Germany, although Lucas, it's a German brand, but they're made by Lira in the UK. Okay, let's start swatching. Let's start with uh, white. They have a reputation for being easily rewettable. I'm not spraying them to make sure that uh, I can verify exactly um, how rewettable they are. So this is white, opaque white, and uh, it is opaque actually. I don't usually swatch white, but uh, to verify how opaque it is, it's nice. Lemon yellow. made with um, PY3 mask tone here on top and then we dilute it with some water very transparent cadmium light it's very easily rewettable must say Wow, this is very pigmented. It's very nice. A 
how nice it is. It's PY35. It's a real cadmium pigment. Then I have a permanent yellow light. It's a lighter yellow. It's very transparent. The cadmium is more opaque. snap them in. Then I have yellow ochre. Yellow ochre can be done with uh, PY42 or 43. 43 is the natural pigment, as, uh, whereas 42 is the synthetic pigment. But um, it is very nice. It's luminous. That is not uh, maybe so opaque as the PY43, which is the real, the true original yellow ochre. Then we have, doesn't move much. Maybe I should wet this, try wetting this. This is the gold ochre. It's a mixture of uh, three pigments. PY42, PR101, that is the Indian or English red, and PBK7, which is black, carbon black. This is a very nice gold docker, but it's almost uh, burnt sienna. But it is very nice. And this transparent also. Let's go to the Naples yellow reddish. It's a mixture of um, two pigments. This one, a red and a brown. It's PR 176 and PBR 24. It's a very useful color for skin tone it's nice it's very nice it's a warm uh, naples uh, yellow doesn't have white this one usually naples yellow has white but i don't see white in this one and it is transparent whereas uh, usually naples yellow is opaque then we go to indian yellow py65 uh, Indian yellow is a very warm yellow. It's almost an orange. It's a color that I love using for sunsets or light uh, inside buildings. It's very pigmented and transparent. I like it very much. So far, it's a very nice range. I like it. It's the first time I use it. Permanent orange. Permanent orange is PO71. It's a dark orange. Very nice. This is also very pigmented. It's true, very wet so easily, these paints. They're really nice. Look, this is gorgeous. Then permanent yellow deep. Maybe I will change the order after having swatched them on my palette. This is PO62. It's also a single pigment. I'm happy to see how many single pigments there are. This is also very pigmented and quite transparent. Even the yellow ochre is very transparent, very good. Then we have cadmium red light. Cadmium red light is PO20. It's a vermilion, basically. It's quite opaque. It's also this paper that doesn't move the paint very much. So. Then 
Lucas Red is PR254. In other brands, this pigment is uh, permanent red. Light. Wow. It's uh, almost a primary red. It's very pretty. It's very, very intense. It's a good mixing color, this one. I wouldn't use it as it is, but um, it's a good uh, mixing color. Let's go to the second row. The first 12 are gone. Now we go to the second row. Let me move this a little so you see the whole palette. The second row is Permanent Red, it's PR242, Sigmund Pigment. It's a very warm red. It's very pigmented, these two. This is also nice mixing red, nice for sunset. The red are really gorgeous. Cadmium Red Deep. Very wet, very, very easily. Wow deep red alizarin crimson this is the first that we meet with um, which is not so light fast only two stars it's also the um, naples yellows reddish only had two stars whereas all the other paints almost have three stars alizarin crimson often has this problem of being more fugitive. So it's PR 176 and it's a bit fugitive. This is also very good for mixing. And also light fastness is only important if you sell your work, but if you just put it in a sketchbook like I do most of the time, uh, it's not so important. Genuine Rose PV19, which is a violet pigment with, we will see again, PV19. Mm. It's almost an opera rose. It's very nice, it's very pink. It's very light also, I you see this very nice as a mixing color or for florals. Magenta, another primary color. They work very easily, these paints. Also very nice as a mixing color or for florals, this one. Look how pretty it is. Purple. Purple is PV19, just like genuine rose, which is violet pigment. That's a reddish purple. Very pigmented, this one also. Then we go to dioxazine violet. This is very nice pigment usually, but not so light fast, but it is very pretty. Look how deep velvety it is. Indathron Blue, it's PB60. It's a single pigment also. A deep blue. It's very nice for sky also this. Let's go to permanent blue PB15 which is a phthalo blue. Three stars and then we go to ultramarine blue deep 
it's PB29, which is the true ultramarine pigment. PB29 doesn't. Okay, yes, it is granulating. Usually, ultramarine is granulating. And it is um, very, very pretty. Ultramarine is a perfect mixing color also. And if it is watered down, it's a very good, it's very nice for skies. Then we have ultramarine light, still PB29. Let's see the difference. I don't see much difference. Yes, then we have the Prussian Blue, PB27, light fast. Mm. I'm afraid I swatched twice the ultramarine deep so because probably this is the ultramarine light yes it's slightly different actually it is lighter this is ultramarine deep so this is the ultramarine light it is lighter it's more granulating as opposite to ultramarine deep which is not much granulating the light is granulating i love granulating colors we haven't uh, met so many granulating colors so much this is the first one then we go to indigo indigo which is um, the first of the third row it's almost black it's velvety it's very very nice Indigo can have different formulas across brands. And this is PR176, PB15, which is cyan, PBK7, which is carbon black, and the touch of red. So this indigo, it is very nice indigo. Some indigos are too gray. This very blue, and it's ideal for night sky. I like it very much. Now we go to Phthalo Blue, Phthalo Blue, PB15, very transparent. They're all very transparent so far, with some rare exception. Very nice, cold blue. Then we have Cyan, it's primary blue. Let's see also PB15. It's a color that I like to use as it is straight from the pan for skies. It's very nice for summer skies, Mediterranean skies or Mediterranean sea. Turquoise, turquoise, I'm not sure. This is it's PB16. Wow! So pretty. This is really gorgeous. I love it. This is also very nice for summer sea. It's a summer color. Then we have the cobalt turquoise. There are two different um, schools of thought for this one. This is PB28, which is cobalt blue. But other brands use PG50 which is cobalt green. And this has a touch of green, actually. It's very nice. It's a bit greenish and it's granulating as well. Then we have green yellow. It's a single pigment. PY, it's a yellow pigment, PY29. It's a golden green, very pretty. 
this is for foliage is ideal then we go to may green it's not a color that i use very much may green it's a bit artificial but um, for far away meadows can be pretty Then we have cinnabar green light. It's two pigments. May green also has two pigments. It's P yellow 175 and PG7. PG7 is um, phthalo green. And this is also PG7 and PY55, which is permanent yellow. And let's go with this cinnabar. A bit artificial but uh, you can use as a base and mix it it's very vibrant though and transparent sap green sap green has a different recipe in each brand this is py 153 and pg7 wow i like it i like this very very much it's very vibrant for leaves it's so pretty it's very pretty permanent green that's py 155 and pg7 just like cinnabar light that's the combination and the treatment is different permanent green it's a bit colder good mixing base not used that it is Chromium Oxide is a color that I love. It's PG17. It's usually quite opaque. It's very nice for winter foliage. Or it's very opaque. Look at this. Let's water this down a little. Very pretty. Cobalt green, and we are at number 36. Cobalt green, PG50. Okay, it's almost a viridian, which is missing in this uh, range. Tallow green. PG7. It's very cold, mixing color, not to be used as it is. Verona green earth, PG26. I love green, um, earth greens, I love them. I have one from Rembrandt that I use a lot. And this is pretty. It's pigmented for being a green, a north green. It's dark and it's granulating. It's very nice. Olive green, two pigments, PG36, PO36. So it's uh, muted with an orange pigment. I usually use a lot olive green. And it is very nice, very natural. You can use it straight from the pan. It's a muted color. And now we go to the earthy colors, my favorite. Not all of them are, okay. This is English Red Light, uh, one of my favorite pigments, PR101. Usually very opaque. This is a bit orangey. And I like it very much. Opaque, as I said. Then we go to Burn Sienna, PBR7, the true Burn Sienna. Some uh, brand use the PR101. And it is very transparent and granulating. 
very pretty, very luminous. I love it. I love this palette. This set is very, very nice. Now a specialty color that you don't expect in a very, that you don't expect in a watercolor set, eh? which is Caput Mortum Deep. Also PR101 and PBK11. PBK11 is uh, oxide black, it's granulating. In fact, it's very granulating and I like the way it tones down the PR101. It's a very pretty color. So you can use it in uh, portraits for uh, shadows as well. Then we have uh, another PR101 with the English Red Deep. Oh, it wets so easily. Here it is. It's very similar. It's, it's very similar to the English red light, but it is deeper and colder. Then we have another earthy green, which is burnt green earth. I've never seen this in another brand. It's three pigments, PBK7, a black, a yellow, and a red. Wow. It's not green, but um, it's very nice. I don't see green uh, in it, but it's almost a burnt amber or a Van Dyke brown that is missing, but I really like it. It's granulating as well. Burnt amber. Burnt amber is colder and darker. It's also granulating. It has uh, PBK7, carbon black, yellow, permanent yellow, and uh, PR176. It's um, slightly fugitive, just like this one. It's only two stars, two stars. They have the same composition, but in different ratio, probably same pigments and also for raw amber you have the same pigments once again and see the difference it's also more fugitive raw amber is not a color that i use very much it's dirty usually but it's granulating and for some woody textures it can come in handy then one of my favorite colors paints gray Let's see how it uh, behaves. It's three pigments, black, uh, PR-176 and um, PB-15. PR-176 is uh, alizarin crimson, so that's why it's a bit fugitive. Paints gray. It has this blue tone. It's very nice. Very nice paint gray. I like it. And uh, last but not least, uh, ivory black. Ivory black is not my favorite black, but you can use it uh, to darken or tone down some colors. Okay, here we are. It's a very complete range. I think that uh, there are some uh, colors that are missing uh, with, with uh, 48 uh, pans. I would have included a cobalt blue a sepia, which is very useful for shadows, and uh, a Naples red, uh, Naples yellow, standard, not the reddish, which is also a color that uh, I used very, very much. Um, 
and raw sienna. I usually prefer raw sienna over yellow ochre because it's more transparent, but this yellow ochre is quite transparent too, so you don't have a real yellow ochre, an opaque one, but you have this uh, PY42, so you could use it as a raw sienna. But um, the two English reds are great. Some colors are really beautiful, like the Naples yellow reddish, the purple is very, very nice. Uh, the sap green, I love it. The green yellow is very nice. The earth tones are very, very good. And uh, the gray also. So um, I think uh, um, I will uh, approve this palette. I am looking forward to try it. They're very transparent and they are almost all single pigments. There are, there are 37 single pigments paints out of 48, which is very, very good. So uh, I think I will give a perfect grade to this palette and uh, see you to the next review. Thanks for having watched it.